Okay, let's try this again, everybody. <laughs> well, it's so good to be with you on Coffee with Kim. This is Kim Johnson, and we are just moving that volume up. It is so good to be with you. Um, once again, I am going to announce uh, um, that I have uh, stepped out of the race in the running for Congress uh, due to the fact that COVID and transportation, things are going a lot longer uh, than we anticipated, I think, in the beginning. And I wasn't able to get back to the States in time. But I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. And I want you to know that all of your prayers, all your support has not gone in vain because there are aspects of the campaign that we are continuing to um, just follow through. And one of those things is what we're gonna be talking about today. Good morning, Sandra. Very good to have you this morning. We are gonna be talking about biblical justice in the Torah, but we're gonna be actually kicking off a series that I'm gonna be starting primarily on YouTube. Um, YouTube uh, is a much better platform for longer uh, discussions. And I'm gonna be talking uh, really about the Torah. Uh, we're gonna to be discussing the Torah. One of the things that I have found, uh, to me, it's, it's kind of shocking. Uh, however, I understand it. So I'm able to negotiate it, but in, uh, in the congressional uh, pursuit that I just encountered, um, I, I stood really in utter dismay over what's going on in America. And I want you to know that the moral decay of America is so clear and nobody really ever wants to address what's really going on in America. But when you think about the fact that 240 million Americans, that's over 62% of the country, and by the way, it's down about 8%, okay? Are Christians of some degree, all right? then you must take a step back and say, if we are a Christian nation, I'm talking about America here, all right? If it is a Christian nation, or even if it is a Judeo-Christian nation, with the majority of Christians acknowledging the fact that it, its foundation is Judaic, it's Jewish, it's in, rooted in the Torah. If this is the case, then why are we seeing such a collapse of moral integrity in America? Why is America experiencing biblical justice at the degree it is experiencing right now with the COVID plague? Is it just a wake up call? Or is there something taking place beneath the surface that Americans need to be aware of? But this should not be, good morning D. <laughs> good morning Kath. This should not be. If 240 million Americans claim to be Christian then it should be, apart from Israel, the most moral country in the world. And once again, if and Dee, is, Dee will confirm this, she, is, she has uh, been with me for a very long time and sat in on a lot of the studies that we've done through the years. Um, this continues to confirm what I've been teaching for years and that is that Christianity is disconnected from its foundation. 
And that's why it can take the route in such an immoral way and still hold on to the tag or the name Christian. Likewise, before the collapse of Europe, at the end uh, of the Holocaust, however, Christian, Christian Europe began to collapse before the Holocaust, let me tell you, that's why there was a Holocaust. But frankly speaking, Christian Europe thought it was imperviable to a collapse of the very religious uh, doctrines that it was known for. It didn't see it coming. And yet, what was going on in Europe that would lead to a complete and utter total collapse of Christianity? If Christianity as a fundamental faith in a nation or in a series of states as we know Europe to be. If it can collapse, then we have to understand that there is a fundamental flaw that exists within it. In other words, it's outside of its faith. And if Christianity is outside of its faith, then we better find out and find out very quickly why and how. And we better understand that there might be something else that needs to be examined. And that puts us to where our series is going, Biblical Justice in the Torah. I am... Um, I want to talk to you. I'm going to share some things with you about the Torah in just a few minutes. But uh, I was studying the Parsha portion. I'm going to teach you what the Parsha portion is in just a minute. Um, and I'm going to teach it. And as time progresses, I'm also going to share uh, rabbinical sources and, and a lot of information you won't get in normal biblical teaching. Um, However, this part, the Parsha is the portion of the week that is read in every Jewish synagogue around the world. Um, and it's what's read, it's what's discussed, it's what's studied every week. And that holds very true in my circle as well uh, here in Israel. Um, I am part of a modern Orthodox synagogue and we uh, study these things every week. This particular week though, I was very, very stirred. As I was going through the very last chapter of the book of Vayikra, which is the book of Leviticus, and again, I'm gonna teach you these things. As I was going through it, I was very, arrested in my spirit over the number seven that God highlights when he begins to talk about what happens to a nation or a people when they walk away from God. So this stirred me because in the book of Isaiah, Yeshiyahu is the Hebrew name of this book, we are told that in the end of days, in the days before the coming of the Messiah, that something miraculous, far-reaching, global is going to happen and it's gonna take place in Jerusalem or it's going to happen from Jerusalem. And this began to happen in 1948. However, 
we are now we are now seeing the the real fulfillment of what the prophet was writing about Yeshiyahu when he said this and he made it clear he said out of Zion out of Zion all right shall go forth the Torah <laughs> and then he says out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and then he says hold on folks <laughs> I'm gonna give you the whole thing I, I have it here but I have a brand new sorry <laughs> right in the middle of an intense moment and I have new pieces of paper and they're thicker than normal and I thought two were together <laughs> I gotta unstick them <laughs> but they weren't okay so there you go all right so it says out of Zion shall go forth the Torah it doesn't say out of Zion shall go forth X Y or Z it says, out of Zion will go forth the Torah. And then it goes on to say, and the word of the Lord shall go forth from Jerusalem, from Jerusalem. It doesn't say it's going to come out of Chicago. It doesn't say it's going to come out of Miami. It doesn't say it's going to come out of Hong Kong. It doesn't even say it's going to come out of Moscow definitely doesn't say it's coming out of Beijing. It says that out of Zion shall go forth the Torah. And Zion is a literal place. And that place is Mount Moriah. That is the center of Jerusalem. Zion is the center of Jerusalem. Zion. It's also the very fundamental ideology of, of Zionism. And somewhere down the road, we'll talk about that. Zion. It is the place of Mount Moriah, the place where Adam and Chave, it's where Adam was created. It is the center of the earth. It is the place where Avraham took Yitzchak in the binding of Isaac. It is the place where David stopped the plague by going and making a sacrifice upon the threshing floor. This is the place where God has put his name. And here he says that out, out, of Zion shall go forth the Torah. So before I even come back to the book of Vayikra to talk about the, the final word that is given to us in this book of the Torah, I want to talk to you about what the Torah is. Because the way it is taught among, if it's even taught, <laughs> in mainstream Christianity leads us to believe something that is not true, okay? So, let's take a look. So, I'm going to ask you if you can see me. All right, here we go. Can you see this? I'm writing right on the glass. All right. You can see that. I think you can. All right. That is the word Torah. Okay. Torah. Oh, I got even a better marker than the black one. <laughs> Let's get it out here, folks. Let's see if I can even get it a different one. Let's go with the blue. All right. So many people believe that the word Torah means law, okay? So when they're referring to what can be called uh, the Old Testament, 
or the Tanakh or the Pentateuch uh, or the first five books, which is known as the Torah. In Christianity, it has a big box around it and says that is the law and that, stay away from it. Just stay away from it because you're not under the law. You've got some brand new revelation going on here. And because of that, this is wrong. Well, let me tell you something first and foremost. Bank, it doesn't mean that. That's the first thing you need to know. So if you've ever sat under a teacher that's taught you that, bang, you have been taught wrong, period. Secondly, what does it, if it doesn't mean this, by the way, the Hebrew word for law is mishpat, <laughs> or law is mishpatim, okay? So, whew, oh, that's a far cry from this word, right? All right, okay. So, if it's not that, what is it? All right, this word happens to mean instruction. Hey, let me ask you a question. Everyone that's watching right now, how many of you would not like to receive instruction in your walk in life, your path in life? How many of you want to reject instruction, just kind of forge it out on your own? Not too many. How many of you are looking for instruction? You know, when I, when I go through and I take a look at similar times in biblical history that we're seeing today, I'm always reminded of King David. And King David was at the, the born and came into his own at the crossroads of Israel's transition from no king to king, okay? So Israel was ruled by God and God alone and, and, and people in between, judges, and there's, there's quite a, a little history going on there. And, that's in history when we talk about that. However, the people wanted a king. So God gave them a king. And the first king they gave him was Saul, Shaul. He was the first king. But that king did not really know how to walk in the ways of God. God realized that he was more given to follow after the leading and the bleeding of the people and what they wanted than what God wanted for the people. Now, you might think, wow, but if you have a king that walks in the ways of the people, wouldn't that be the best thing for the people? But we find over and over and over again that's not the case because no one knows people better than God. And no one knows how to lead and guide with the true heart of a shepherd better than God. And no one has such great laws and wisdom and ways than God. No one in all of human history has freed humanity and given them the power of choice but God. So God needed a man to step on the scene that was after his own heart. And so he chose this little shepherd boy that had been really kicked out. He was separated from his family and there's a story of Midrash, there's a story as to why David was really uh, kind of the black sheep of the family. So he was out on the backside. All the other brothers were at war, David was feeding the sheep, and God chooses David 
to be the next king, the king that's going to rule. And who follows David? Who follows David? Well, it says here the people that followed David were the ones that were in debt, the ones that were in distress. Is there anybody out there right now that's in distress? All right? And the ones who are in discontent. In other words, the ones who are discontented with the government, <laughs> the ones who are distressed, all right, because they are under a, a burden or a pressure that is, is more than they can bear, and the ones that were in debt. And now right now, we are looking at millions of people that are in this slippery curve right here. Millions, with 126 million at least out of work in America. Million plus over here in Israel that have just been challenged. And that doesn't include the rest of the world. We're looking at potential economic collapse. This is really discontent with the government in America. Oh my gosh, it's at an all time high under unbelievable distress, not knowing what the future holds, and in debt because of economic hardship. So these are the people that follow David. And what did, oh, ah, what did David teach them? All right, hold on one minute, I'm gonna get some wet, 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 wet. Just gonna get some wet paper towels. Hold on everybody, be right back. Hmm. I'm grab a rag. Let's see if I can grab a rag here. All right. All right. So coming right back. Hold on. I forgot about this part. <laughs> Sorry about that. Everybody, I forgot about the fact that we're gonna have to erase this. <laughs> okay. So is this working for you? Can you see it okay? I think it's cool. I I, I spent quite a few couple hours this morning trying to find this so I could uh, do this. It was in my heart to really bring this home to you. And so, um, so here we were. Here's David. And what's David going to teach the people? What is David going to do? Well, David is going to bring to the people the Torah, the instructions that God has given to Israel for its success. And that's exactly what it's for. In fact, it's so interesting in, uh, I believe it's Psalm 37, we read that God, it says that God is happy. He's happy when you succeed. He talks about the nation of Israel and he says, I'm going to give you all these amazing guidelines, these amazing instructions. And if you walk in these instructions, these precepts, these, these, these ways, all right? If you walk in them, he says, you will be a wise and understanding nation. And every single one will work, look towards you if you walk in them. Somehow I feel like we have lost the connection to what we're supposed to be walking in. And so in this series, I want to bring that center stage I want to talk about this amazing book and the Torah. And let me just give you a little breakdown of what the Torah is. Now, what it is and what it is as an umbrella term. There's always what it is literally, and then there is the umbrella term for something. Very often we see this in a lot of different things. All right. So let me break it down with a little different color here. All right, so we have the Torah, we have 
the fact that it means instruction, very, very, very important. It does not mean law. Does it contain laws? Yes, but it doesn't mean law. And this is the most important thing you need to take away today because many, many people are taught that's what it means and stay away from it. But I find that because it has been literally an enemy to the Christian faith, let's put it this way, mainstream Christian faith, that the, 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 what they call the Old Testament or what we want to call the Tanakh, the Torah, has, has been considered an enemy, all right? It has caused Christianity to get outside of its faith so much so that you are seeing the collapse of an entire nation because of its moral abyss. A nation that God raised up is one of the wise and understanding nations and the most prosperous nations in all of human history. A nation that ultimately in 1948 would be the first to announce the, the rebirth of the nation of Israel, bring it on, and a nation that just a couple years ago became so interconnected with Israel as we moved the embassy to Jerusalem, the two nations becoming biyachad, both of them, the constitutions of both of these nations rooted in the moral principles and the framework of the Torah. But America has lost its way. So much so that if we do not find it quick, I don't know if we're going to make it. I know that we are, but you understand what I say by that. The fallout will be great regardless. So let me just give you a little breakdown of what the literal Torah is. First and foremost, it is the first five books of the Bible. The first five books. All right? A lot of times if you go to a theological school or a Bible school, it will also be called the Pentateuch. Now these books... What are they? The first book is Genesis. All right? Also in Hebrew, it's known as Bereshit. Number one. The second book is the book of Exodus. And this is also known as the book of names, Shemot. The third is Leviticus. And this is Vaikra. And the fourth is the book we're about to go into. <laughs> we just finished Leviticus, so we're going to look into Numbers, which is also known as Bamidbar. And the fifth one is Deuteronomy. So we can see that here. Do I have to move this so you guys can see it? Maybe a little bit, a little bit. All right, let's see. I think we're a little bit out, but if you can't see it, it's Deuteronomy and known as the words, Devarim. Okay, so these five books are written, authored by Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, okay? Now, let me say this. Every foundational understanding of the kingdom of God, of the nation of Israel, of the purpose of the, I, I want to say not only the Hebrews, but the purpose of the Jewish people, the purpose of the land of Israel, the purpose of Jerusalem, the purpose of God's purpose with the nation, the purpose of all redemption, Every single uh, seed of understanding how God thinks, what he likes, what he doesn't like, how he expects us to walk if we serve him, 
what God wants, what he's doing, and how he does it, all of that is in these five books. This is the moral underpinning of God. This is his ways. This is his paths. And so, with that, this is what we're going to be talking about. And so last week, and I'll wrap this up, and we'll pick this up next week on YouTube. <laughs> uh, before I go on, let me see who's with us. All right, Teresa, good to see you. Anahama, hi. I was thinking about you this morning, Nahama. All right, Linda, so good to see you. Teresa, Kathy, hey, Kath. Marianne, Boker Tov to you, Mayor. All right, Meredith, so good to see you. Beverly, Andrew, wow, great to see you. Barney, hey, so good to see you. Amalia, Kathy, Sandra, all right. Uh, good to see you, Sandra, so good to see you. Sandra Casey, Catherine, oh, so good to see you. Ada, so good to see you. All right, Victor, Sarah. All right, Francis. Okay, Victor Chu, always good to see you. Always good to see you, everybody. All right, so here we are. Okay, so this is the foundation. So here I am reading, and I'm going to read just a little bit. As we were closing out the book of Aikra, book of Leviticus, Sarah, all right. <laughs> all right, I gotta stop and say something for a minute. All right, Marianne, thank you. I just, uh, I, you know I have not been teaching for a while now. Not, I haven't taught anything uh, like this. Victor from Singapore, so good to see you. All right, everybody, it's awesome to see all of you. Um, but I really, really had it in my heart once again to at least go through this because this is the, as I just shared to you, so I won't belabor the point at any level. I'm just going to say right here is where the breakdown is. I, I am very, very convinced of that. The breakdown, not only, um, and personal lives, but it is the breakdown in the nation of America right here, right here. And so we got to address it and we got to address it now. Um, so let's take a look at Vaikra. If you have, if you have a Bible, we are in the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 26. All right. And it says here, If you walk in my statutes, and now I'm clear that we are talking right now to the nation of Israel, all right? I'm very clear of that. Um, but the principles of God don't change. And for those of you that believe and follow God with your whole heart, this is very, very important for you to hear. It says, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you your rain in their season. The land shall yield her produce. The trees of the field shall yield her fruit. And your threshing, which is really what you, how you make the grain, how you actually create, uh, the sustenance for the people, all right? It says, it shall reach unto the sowing time and you shall eat your bread until you have enough and you will dwell in your land safely. And I will give in the land, peace in the land, and you shall lie down, none will make you afraid. I will cause all the evil beasts to cease out of the land and neither shall the, go the sword come into the land. You will chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword. Five of you shall chase a hundred 
and a hundred of you shall chase 10,000 and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword and I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and I will establish my covenant with you and you will eat of the old store a long time and you shall bring forth the old from before the new. In other words, there will still be old left. And when we talk about old, we're talking about produce. We're talking about grains, all right? We're talking about sustenance. It says it will still be present when the new harvest comes in. So it will still be present, all right? And he says, and then I will set my tabernacle among you. Uh, not only can we talk about the tabernacle being the Mishkan and the temple in Jerusalem uh, and the temple mounts, uh, the temple that will return is the third temple, but also tabernacling with man. We find this to be a very present theme in the book of Devarim, in the book of Deuteronomy. That means that God's presence is going with you, tabernacling with you and my soul shall not abhor you, and I will walk among you, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And I, the Lord your God, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Now, Jews alone didn't come out of Egypt, all right? There was a mixed multitude that came out of Egypt, and you, you know, thousands of years ago, might have been part of that mixed multitude, who knows? And it says here, and, um, and I, it says uh, that you should no longer be a bondman, slave to the beggarly elements of this world, uh, to the nations. I have broken the bar of our yoke and made you to go upright or caused you to walk in moral integrity. This is the promise that God made even to uh, Avraham Avinu, our father Abraham. These are the promises. These promises are very, very powerful. You'll be blessed going out, you'll be blessed coming in. Uh, everything about your life will be fruitful. Everything about your life will, will see the stamp and the hand and the provision of God. You'll have peace. You'll walk with peace. You'll dwell safely. You won't be in harm's way. Your nation will not not be subjugated to other nations. You don't risk the chance of another nation taking you over. You, um, you will have such authority in your nation that if the enemy even comes near your doorstep, you'll be able, just five people will drive out a hundred. The odds, you know, just reminds me of, of uh, the battle uh, on the 1973 Yom Kippur War, when they came in and came down from the Golan Heights, all right? Um, and uh, also down in, in Sinai, the 1973 Yom Kippur War. And uh, one of the most incredible things about that is it was like, like whopping five people that were manning the station in the north and hundreds of Thousands. I mean, hundreds. They, they were, there was like a hundred thousand coming down from the north, and there's these five people, and they chased them away. I mean, this is, they held the fort. So uh, until, you know, help came. I mean, this is the kind of odds we're talking about. And then uh, God continues to say he's going to, to have respect for you. It's not only that you're going to have respect for him, but there's, got, there's a mutual respect going on here between you and God. And then he goes on to say that he'll multiply. In fact, even in the Chazal, when you, when you go in and you look at commentary, there, there wasn't even a barren one among, um, among the nation. That's amazing. The fruitfulness of the womb. And um, God says, he says, then I'll walk among you. I'll be among you. 
I won't leave you. All right. And then he also goes on to say, not only will you be my people and I will be your God, but, but he also makes this incredible promise that there will never be any lack, never. There won't be meat shortages on the, in the stores. There won't be fruit and vegetable shortages on the shelves. There won't be dry silos with no grain when the next harvest comes in. You won't run out under any circumstance because you walked in my statutes, it says, my kuchim, my mitzvot, you walked in them, you did them, you kept my commandments or my words. And where do you find them? This is where you find them in the Torah. This is what was written, these instructions. I am not going to say you don't find them in other books because all Jewish writings carry the fundamentals of the Torah, all of them. However, it is so easy to walk away from them. And what happens if you do? I'm only going to share a few verses because if I continue, I have to go somewhere else and that's a whole lesson within itself and I don't want to keep you, or keep you too long. But it says here, but if you will not hearken unto me and you will not keep my commandments. If you reject my principles, if you reject my ways, my words, my mitzvot, those are the things that we do and love your neighbor as yourself, all right? These are the things that we do. He says, if you reject them, if your soul abhor my ordinances, oh, that's a lesson right there, so that they will not do all my commandments, but you will break my covenant. You know, I, I've said this before, many of you already know this, but the founding fathers of America made a covenant with God. That's a very, very precarious place to be right now if you're breaking it. Then he says, if you break that, I also will do this unto you. I will appoint terror over you, even a plague of consumption, one of fever. It will cause your eyes to fail, the soul to languish, and you shall sow your seed in vain and your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be smitten before your enemies. They that hate you shall rule over you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Pelosi, Schumer, that whole clan right there, they hate you. I just want you to know, they have an agenda. If you are an American, and you believe in constitutional integrity, they hate you. I'm not gonna mince my words there. They hate you because they have a bigger agenda and they don't believe in constitutional integrity. God says, he will set his face against you and you shall be smitten before your enemies that they, they that hate you shall rule over you and you shall flee when none even pursues you. You will be afraid. I cannot believe how many people I have spoken to over the last few months who are terrified. They're, they're so afraid. I mean, it's consuming them. And that's what God said will happen. 
And it says, and if you will not yet for these things hearken unto me, I will chastise you seven times more. This is biblical justice. And when you get to the end, now, the world has really never seen the end of this chapter of God's seven times, times seven times, times seven times, five times seven, I went through, six times seven. But they've never actually seen the last of the sevens because those are the wrath of God. And the interesting thing about this passage, and I'm going to kind of close up with this and, and go more into detail later, but there's just a very general thing, and, and I'm show, sharing with you why I've been very challenged to, to do this every Sunday at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. And that is because... These, these instructions here regarding serving God or turning from God in the end of Vayikra, the end of Leviticus, are for and directed towards Am Israel, the people of Israel, the, the nation that was completely scattered for almost 2,000 years from its homeland. However, God went with them. He tabernacled with him. He never forsake, forsook them. He stayed with Judah, uh, the Yehudim, the whole time. And they, they saw an element of, of uh, judgment that is, is beyond comprehension. Uh, or, but, or even if I want to just say chastisement, a better word maybe. But the, the, the thing that I want people to understand is what God says, what happens to the nations that do these things to his people. The nation that rejects God, as Shem says, in the Torah, by the way, it will be turned into hell. Not hell, not in the sense of the hell that's, uh, that is always presented uh, in the center of the earth, but hell alone can be the state of being uh, when you are absent from God, all right? That's really a state of being. And then it also says that God will not forget what the nations have done and that he will visit those nations. And what will he visit them with? He will visit with this. And so that means that we want to get ahead of that. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want to be in this. And, and there is a word here that says and challenges all of us, and we'll see it more as we go through the Torah, and that is the fact that you have an option to come out of that by turning back to God and by learning his ways, the way that he walks and uh, the way that he talks and doing what is right in his sight. Very, very uh, important lesson, especially in the nations right now when we are seen this is do not i do not want at all anyone to misunderstand what this is this covid thing regardless of whether it was it's a big conspiracy yeah probably started in china yeah probably could a lot of the people that are being questioned as to their part in COVID be part of it? Probably, <laughs> because uh, the Torah teaches us that these people, they, they are bent on doing wickedness, they are. But however, do not think that God has not allowed this. 
and he allows it for one reason, to teach us, to help us, and to take us back to the very foundation that he wants us to learn and understand what it means to walk in his ways. And for the nations right now, hey Gladys, I see you from Singapore, my friend Ivan was on, so good to see everybody. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We are going to, at 10 o'clock Central Eastern Time, I am going to talk about biblical justice in the Torah. Uh, and we're gonna go through it. And we're gonna talk about these precepts. And we're gonna talk about the places in the area in modern society where they are so broken down that they're causing such consternation in the lives of so many people and uh, we don't want that. We want to, to lift up the word of God. We want to share it and we want to restore it uh, to so many that are suffering right now. Maybe <laughs> I laugh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, everybody. It is just so good to be with you. Um, it's kind of a week ending there, but I don't need to say it anymore. I really don't. This is the first, and uh, I just wanted to introduce it to everybody who's with me on Facebook because we're going to go on, uh, as I said, uh, I'll be sending out a notice. Just make sure you click on it, subscribe, because we have a YouTube channel coming out specifically just to talk about the Torah. And you'll have a part, um, you will have a part uh, uh, to share, and you'll also be able to ask questions. Um, but I really want to get back to some real basics when it comes to biblical um, foundations. And I want, I really want to do this because I feel that this is the missing link in mainstream. Uh, this is a miss, missing link in a lot of, uh, in, in a lot of secular Judaism. It is also the missing link in a lot of mainstream Christianity. And that is, you know, Christianity cannot, uh, I want to be very careful what I say because I don't want to be misinterpreted. But it's a Jewish book, folks. You cannot be separated from its foundation. You need to learn it. If indeed you want to be part of Am Israel, the people of Israel, this is what you need to know. You need to know how God thinks, how he walks. Right, Lila? I think you're there, Lila. <laughs> and um, if you're... It, if you're a Jew as well, it is not no different. You cannot walk a secular Jewish life and be completely separated from Am Israel. And, and the, what puts you, it's not going into the Orthodox community, although you know there's a lot of uh, benefits, but, the, but that's not what makes or breaks the Torah. What it is, it's the study of it and the actions and the doing of it. And so... Um, this breakdown in America, when it's 200, and I said this in the beginning, so if you have just coming in the end, America is a Judeo-Christian nation. Over 240 million Americans claim to be Christian. And if you claim to be Christian, then there has to be some kind of moral integrity involved. And if that is the case, we wouldn't be seeing what is going on in America right now. It wouldn't be happening. And if it is happening, we better find out why. Where is the breakdown? What is the breakdown? That's the question. And that's why we're going to do this session for the next several weeks. We're going to get on this biblical justice in the Torah. All right? There you go. Every Sunday, 10 o'clock, and you will see... Uh, no, it's going to be 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. 11 Eastern. Uh, so merit will be 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and a link will go out, and it will be um, 
a link will go out and it will be uh, um, primarily on YouTube. So I'll make sure, <laughs> it's gonna, I don't know how, but I'm gonna work very hard at getting everybody over to YouTube for this particular class, all right? Uh, I like being on Facebook, but I think YouTube will serve all of us better, all right? So I think that will be the case. All right, so let me go through and let me see everybody who's on, all right? Um, I gotta be honest, I have not taught for a long time and I feel like I am way, 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 way out of practice, all right? So forgive me if I was, um, yeah, I had some thoughts today. I'm gonna come back to this next week. I really am gonna hone in on understanding the difference between instruction and law. Uh, I think people really need to understand that. So they, they can grasp the concept of what it means to walk with God. All right, so here we are, Todd. It is so good to see you, Marianne. Love you so much, dear. All right, it is so good to see you. Deanna Webb, it is so good to see you. Uh, thank you, Deanna, great to hear you. All right, Lila, Brazil, how is it? I don't know about you, but it's over, a it's been 100 here today. <laughs> I didn't turn the air on <laughs> until we get through COVID. Got to save some money. We got to make sure every bill is paid. So anyways, so anyways, Chris, so good to see you. All right. Isaac, good to see you. Gladys, Singapore. All right. Deanna, Marianne, Peggy. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Wisconsin. Jerry, good to see you. Kathy, always. Sarah, Chicago, so good to see you again, Victor. All right, everybody. Any questions, uh, make sure you, Nikama, so good. To, Nikama, we have to chat. Let's chat. I really was thinking of you this week. Uh, it's only Sunday, but <laughs> anyways, everybody. Um, it's been great and I will catch you on this subject next week. Maybe we'll do a little cooking class in a few minutes, all right? I wanna share with you our new cooking school, so we'll do that, we got a cooking school. And not that I, not that I just sit around thinking of these things, I gotta tell you, I, I don't, but I have so many questions on these things, I thought, you know, I don't have to do this for a long period of time, but right now, Everybody has the opportunity to be online, which, you know, we, it's a great opportunity for, uh, for us to hold a few cooking classes, to get a few things out of the way. We don't get those opportunities uh, uh, all the time. So anyways, everybody, it has been wonderful. Linda, Wisconsin, if I didn't say hi, I'm saying hi again. So anyways, wonderful, everybody. So good to be with you again. And uh, <laughs> I promised you I'd send that to you, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, did you, did you get that? I think you got it. All right. Oh, Kat, so good to see you. Sharon, Sharon. Oh my gosh, it is so good to see you, my dear friend, Sharon. Sharon and I go back a long way. She's in Chicago. She is, if you ever need a stylist, this girl is the girl. She is not only one of my oldest friends, but wow, it is so good to see you. All right, so I hope, I hope you're COVID well. <laughs> And uh, PM me. All right, love you. Kath, love you. All right, sis. Okay. All right, very, very good. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. All right, well, we'll get the recipe out there. I think you got it, Sarah. <laughs> but we're going to cook anyways. How about tonight in a few minutes? Probably give me about 30 minutes to transition everything. And how about if we make a ginger cake tonight? Let's make a ginger cake. Oh God, doesn't that sound great? By the way, guys, this is a weight loss cake. You gotta see this, all right? Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.